I thought I'd give you a whip around, show you what's happening, and I'll also give you a whole heap of reasons why I don't have a ride on mower. This is Rebecca's rock garden. Thank you very much for your kind addition to our happenstance, Rebecca. I've been buying potting mixes and plants and things to go in here. It's already looking pretty lovely, isn't it? I do love these, the lobelia. And, uh, I want a whole hedge of lavender along the back here. That's the plan. This is the tagastasi, the tree lucerne, which is growing really nicely and it's getting pods again. So I can save the seeds from these for the seed saver group that I belong to. And oh, look at this. Look at the oak tree. Oh my gosh, look at it. It's up to my chin. It's up to my chin. And this is the oak tree that I grew from that one little acorn. So there we go. Mighty oaks from little acorns grow indeed. The little native trees are doing well. Talking about natives, I left a clump of native flowers here, which aren't open just yet, but gee, they're beautiful. They're called Wallenbergia. They like it. I left it exactly how it was, and they're happy with that. This is a cutting of the daisy from Eddie in the village here. I love daisies. Don't you love daisies? Sweet Williams at the back there, and a liquid amber tree is growing well there. And these are the artichokes, the Jerusalem artichokes, otherwise known, otherwise known as fartichokes. But you can um, cook them with a little bit of vinegar, I think, and that might help. So that's this little garden that was just a mess of rocks. Remember that one? And it's really quite beautiful now. The dam, the dam, I can almost call it a dam now, you know, because it's holding, it's holding its water and dragonflies, frogs, lilies, it's looking really beautiful. The gum tree over here is huge. I did tip the top. My neighbor suggested I tip the top to sort of bush it out and I did. And look, now I have to look right up to the top of it. It is higher than if I put my hand above my head, it's even higher than that. That's the Sydney red gum. We've had so much rain that uh, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all these clumps of grasses. So there's a little tea tree hiding in here. It's about uh, waist height. Here's another one of the red flowering gums from uh, another neighbor here. It's got lovely new growth on it. I, I am really loving living in the yurt. I just love it. It's beautiful. It's the best thing I ever did. And this patch here, this is where all the materials were for, for building Jenga. Finally, with the help from Olga, thank you, Olga. And thank you for the uh, couple of bales of loose and mulch. The gardens really appreciate that. So big thank you there. Foxgloves are huge this year. Unfortunately, here's the nectarine tree. It got curly leaf despite natural remedies. So it doesn't look very good. There are nectarines on it, but I don't know. It's a sad looking thing, so. Any suggestions there will be gratefully received. The nectarine is sort of like a hairless peach. So what happens to the nectarine could happen to the peach too. Look at this though. This is the mariposa plum. Oh my gosh, have I got plums. So as I can't put exclusion bags on them, I'm just hanging a few from the tree so that it, it works as a deterrent. But there are so many plums. So I don't know, chili plum sauce, plum jam, Talking about plums, my cherry plum tree, remember the only thing that was on this block has got masses of cherry plums on it, despite those horrendous winds we had, which were totally unexpected and out of the blue, 60, 70, 80 kilometer hour winds. This is what we have though. So it just thinned it out a little bit. So I'll be able to collect cherry plums from my own tree this year, instead of wandering around the village looking for them. In the berry garden, I can see that there's going to be lots of black currants this year. On this bush, I can see them already starting to form there. Uh, the gooseberries, I haven't seen anything yet. These ones over here, I don't see any on these, but oh no, look, look, there's, there's something there. This jostaberry, a gooseberry black currant cross, hasn't really done, hasn't had any flowers. But I won't give up. <laughs> You know, it could come a little bit later. And good morning, mouse house. It's time to open up the mouse house. Oh boy, did I have a nice time at that van life gathering. 
they're just the best people so if you get a chance go along morning mouse house everything's fine and dandy in here good oh oh that was pretty look at that the reflection of the the yurt in the window there that's very nice right, i'm in the process of clearing up round here I was given some of these goddess lilies which I split up and one is already flowering in here. This is, uh, this is the little challenge. Slugs and snails. Beetroot's growing well in here. These little shoots here are the choco vine. I put boron, little sprinkles around the place because boron's good for beetroots apparently and it seems to be so. But my lemon tree. The lemon tree that was just about dead, look at it. It's had flowers. So being in between the tucker box gardens here and giving it that kind of shelter has worked wonders. And let's have a look at the kumquat. And look, the kumquat has got new shoots on it too. So it worked. Hello, <laughs> look who's in here. Hello, Tutu. Is it nice and warm in there? You can go in there. She got uh, attacked again by a feral cat. Her driver's side rear is not looking too good. So I don't mind if she's in there today resting. Y you okay in there? You okay? You okay? Now the raspberries. We've had loads of flowers and now the raspberries are coming along beautifully. Look at these. Wow, everywhere. I may have to throw a net over them, but so far so good. I'm looking forward to those, they were so tasty. And speaking of berries, over here, I was given um, a couple of pieces of boysenberry, and look at them go. Look at these. Masses, and they go all the way along behind the compost. So that's the berries, and that's not the only place I've got them, but that's some of them. I've nipped the, the flower tops off the garlic and uh, some of that is huge. Then I've also got onions and shallots in there, all doing well. The chilies come back, the poppies are great. Oh, there's a little bit of basil. I've put a few more things in. There's actually fruit, fruit on this tree for the first time ever. What a gorgeous day. And this little pond here is... Um, is holding water a lot better and uh, the little tiny gum trees now are taller than me again it's, it's, it's getting tricky to keep up with the mowing um, and you know I just use either the push mower with no power whatsoever or I use the um, Ryobi 33 centimeter one and that's it so the reasons why I don't have a ride on mower is because with the little one I can get into so many places. Um, with the little one I can charge the battery relatively quickly. With the little one I don't have to remove all the rocks on the property. I can sort of dodge and go around them and leave some kind of leave contours which I really like. And um, well there's the cost as well I suppose. They're quite expensive and the maintenance and the uh, fuel and the oil and the spark plugs and from Ashley's book the small uh, space cookbook that I showed you last time I've made the vinegar the dandelion vinegar and I know that the dandelions on my place are pure and clean and absolutely no chance of um, you know any kind of contaminants because I don't use any <laughs> Dickie Bird is saying good morning. I've covered some of the quince, but not all of them. There's lots. I put this band of cardboard around the bottom so to stop that, you know, whatever it was that upset them last year. So this year, who knows? There may be quince pace on the horizon. While I'm over here, the grapes. There'll be grapes this year. Look, 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 look. Little tiny, tiny, tinies. Yes, another wound. So I have two I have two grapes here and one is um, a white sultana grape, seedless, and the other is a really old one from this area called Isabella. Isabella is a seedy grape, but it might be really nice for grape juice. Look at this, it's covered. 
I've, I've had passion fruit all year round and look there's just new passion fruit now that's decided it's summer or spring at least here and so lots and lots of passion fruit more tomatoes I've put in the bottom there <laughs> would you believe these are sweet peas <laughs> sweet peas how lovely a bit out of season but you know <laughs> what are seasons these days who knows we're working our way up over the trellis with the jasmine here and uh, the little rose a few cherries on here we'll see how they go they're looking all right actually the wind like I said you know blew a lot off but it doesn't matter because because they're young trees blowing um, a bit of fruit off is a good idea actually we don't want them to struggle with too much weight strawberries have been great already so I've picked some strawberries this is a new apricot little fella down here remember I cut the top off but it's doing okay pink lady is growing well this cherry tree which was the original cherry tree I don't know we'll just have to wait and see what happens there and then there's the peach and the peach is loaded but it's also getting little bits of curly leaf as well there's another egg chooks are laying really well um, the gala apple tree loads everywhere heaps 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 and the granny smith loads remember last year the wind blew them off all by one or two but look at it now there's masses of them so I bagged some we'll keep an eye on that the apricot hasn't done anything this year so I'll, I'll cut it back to being a bit shorter a bit stockier I think this is the other almond tree I don't know why it's kind of not grown on this bit I have no idea it seems alive again I'm putting comfrey around every tree I've already cut it back once and I, I mow in here with this little mower I love it it's good for getting the heart rate up a bit um, veggie garden looking okay looking okay I've planted new stuff here I put in eggplants and some tomatoes at the back I think that's enough in that area we'll let some different lettuces go to seed over here I have some corn with beans so hopefully the beans will grow up the corn we'll see the broad beans are still producing prolifically I eat them when they're little just steam the whole thing and sometimes I pod them I think these are purple broccolis <laughs> it's always a surprise in my garden because I put it in and I forget what it is but it's all edible it's all delicious it's all organic it's all right here so all sorts of things at the bottom here some more tomatoes that's actually aroma it says so and more here and beetroot here and beetroot under here and some leeks I've been every couple of weeks putting another bag of cow manure mix on the potatoes mounding them up again and a couple of days ago I just wanted a potato and so I just reached in and there was a beautiful big potato so all that's working well at the front here there's lots there's little things growing squash flowers tomatoes herbs <laughs> it's nice to have a mix isn't it silver beet is growing really nice this season's new silver beet and the almond tree which I missed before this tree actually bears every year some trees every second year this one every year the olive's got loads of little will be olives on it so that's the trip around today it's wood in the barrow just in case it gets cold and it's it's been lovely to catch up with you again good to see you all i'll talk to you again really soon and um stay well keep shining <laughs> bye for now time for a cuppa bye